Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to my cybersecurity show. And today's going to be awesome because we're going to talk about our favorite topic in the whole wide world, pen testing, right? Ah, aren't you glad you made it today? Because we're talking about pen testing. Who doesn't love pen testing? It's awesome. Um, you know, when you're breaking things. Don't forget there's other things you got to do as a pen tester that we tend to forget that there's part of the part of the job, part of the thing. So that's what we're going to talk about today, which is paperwork, right? I say paperwork. Paperwork's, you know, part of it, but really it's like those administrative tasks, talking to clients, writing up, all sorts of interesting things. Today we're going to take a look at one aspect of that, and I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't do this episode, right? It would be a bad idea to forget about this because it does happen a lot. And of course, I've talked to a lot of people that are pen testers out in the field. I ask them about this or it comes up and they're like, oh yeah, that's like a really important part. And if you don't do it well, you know, that's, that's not good and bad things can happen. People that are hiring managers are like, oh yeah, if they had that on their resume that they were strong in that area, uh, definitely increases your odds of gainful employment, at least getting a call and saying, hey, let's ha- let's have a chat. So if you got those technical skills, that's great, but it's only really one part of the equation. So we want to talk about that a little bit today. Before we get too deep into that, do me a favor, find the old subscribe button wherever the heck it's running around down there and smash its brains out. And then, of course, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of when another one of these lovely episodes drops and you don't miss a minute or a second of us learning and growing together. Uh, and of course, like and share with your friends. That helps the channel get a little more notoriety and other people will join that conversation. Speaking of conversation, add to the comment boxes. Man, I, I really want this channel to be kind of like this area of tribal knowledge where, and it's static, right? Anybody can come to them and watch these videos and they can see those comments below of people adding to the conversation. I've had a lot of really good conversations with people already. I would hope to continue with that. So make sure if you got something interesting about what we're talking about today to say, put it in the comment section so we can all benefit from that stuff. That said, let's jump into what the heck I'm talking about today. Today, we are going to take a look at what's known as scoping, right? You got to scope. What, what is scope? It's mouthwash, right? You put it in your mouth. Belly, shut up. It's not mouthwash. You. I don't know where he gets it, you know, but... um. No, Billy's wrong. What a scope is, is the defined parameters or to tell you this is how far you may go and no farther, right? No farther, no farther than this. Uh, because a lot of times we feel like these bulls in a china closet, right? Or we're, 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 we're strong and we're virile and we want to attack and it's fun to use these skills. And it is. Anyone would be lying to say otherwise, but left unfettered, right? Left unchecked, we would probably cause some sort of damage. So it'd be nice to know, hey, what are your more sensitive things? What don't you want us to touch? These types of ideas go along into the scope. And that's kind of the um, idea behind scoping the engagement of where should I be doing this? You know, I don't want to waste my time on working on something you don't care about or that is irrelevant to you. Right. Or that might hurt you. Don't want to do that because guess what happens when you hurt your clients? They don't call you back. They cease to be your clients at that point. And then you have a hard time getting new clients. And then, well, you find other gainful employments in, you know, the other wonderful industries that many people engage in. But it won't be this one. Right. That that ship has sailed at that point. So we need to get into scope. So, for a scope here, let's go into the computer screen. There it is. How do we do this? If you've never if you've never engaged with this before, if you've never really even thought about this idea before, you've been so busy learning cool stuff, this might have just kind of passed by you and you 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 don't even know where to begin. So, we're going to start from that idea that I don't know where to begin, but I want to because I want to be good at this. I want to make myself usable by an organization that would find me uh, beneficial to have on their staff. So I have went out and I just kind of did some searching. Of course, SANS. SANS has given us a great um, resource here with the pen test scope worksheet. Put these, um, what do you call those? URLs. That's what they are. Billy, shut up. Anyway, uh, you put that URL. I'm going to put that down in the description for us. And you hit the download. I have down. It's funny. You hit download. It actually doesn't 
download it. It just opens it in the browser and then you can download it. Weird, right? So I downloaded it. Here we go. Got it now. What are the target organization's biggest security concerns? This is where we're starting off with out of the out of the gate, right? What 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 are you what are you scared of? What's your biggest fear? What keeps you up at night? What makes you go, you know, I'm sweating, you know, that that fever dream that this thing has occurred, the 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 red areas of your risk matrix analysis charts, right? You know, the criticals that show up on vulnerability reports. Oh, what is that? That's probably what they're going to be talking about here. So that's what we're starting the game off with. And it's wonderful because it does contextualize what's going on. So it says, what are the target organization's biggest security concerns? Examples include disclosure of sensitive information. Might not be a good idea that we do that. Uh, and if that were to occur, there would be like biblical type of, of, of grief right? That rending of clothes and throwing of ash on your head and, you know, like not eating and just standing in the street doing that. This is, yeah, it's fun. If you read that stuff, it's, uh, it's always interesting to see how people mourn a loss in the Bible. Uh, so interruption of production processing, embarrassment due to website defacement, etc. What is that thing that makes you scared? And, and tell me tip of the spear, exactly what the most scary thing is. And you know what? That not only gives me something to go after to see if there are weaknesses that might be um, a way in by an, a threat actor, but it also contextualizes some parts of my pen test. So if I was doing something that could affect that and cause those issues, I'm going to be a little more wary about how I engage in that and um, maybe even not do it at all, Right. I might want to go, well, I can't go that way because over there, I might touch that system. And if that goes down, well, you know, I'm not going to have some happy campers on my, my hand. They're going to be looking at me going, Billy, what have you done? We have told you explicitly that if that goes down, then, you know, the apocalypse occurs. Okay. So, again, contextualizes the test itself. We don't want to do anything that, that might cause that kind of damage. So... Knowing those concerns can help us better engage with our client's network, right? Let's go down to the next thing here. We got what specific host network address ranges and applications should be tested. This is an ought. This is a moral imperative. As Chris Knight would have said in Real Genius, if you haven't seen that, that is required watching by anybody that wants to be in computers, IT or especially IT security, because, man, there's some great social engineering stuff in that movie. Uh, so check that out. Super fun flick. Uh, but yes, a moral imperative. What should we be doing? Right? So specific hosts, network address ranges, or applications. And then we list that in here. Right? So maybe they've got multiple subnets. Who knows? Uh, maybe just a few specific hosts are going to make it. But these are defining and giving you permission to that, those specific boxes. Now you also have like a get out of jail free card. We'll talk a little bit about that. Another piece of paperwork that kind of like basically gives you that kind of permission that if you were to get caught doing these things, you could use that as a, hey, no, no, I, I was told explicitly that this should be done, right? Now it's interesting. I don't know if they're going to talk about this, but it does raise my eyebrow for a second in the idea that make sure that the hosts or address ranges or applications that they want you to test are owned by those companies and verifiably so because what happens well, no maliciousness right just accidentally they add an IP address to a range of IP addresses or specific hosts that they don't own and you test it all the paperwork in the world is not going to get you out of that trouble. You're going to have to try to fast talk your way out of it. And hopefully that works. No guarantee that that would work at all. So we don't want to get in trouble. Ask the coal fire guys, right? You haven't heard that. Watch or listen to the dark net diaries about the, um, the coal fire incident. Wow. I'm never going to, I think it was Iowa, not going to Iowa and doing, <laughs> doing a physical test. Cause Dang, those boys almost got roasted 
the uh, my jaw was open. I, I was I was listening to this story, and these two guys tell the tale of what occurred, and I'm 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 gobsmacked. I'm flabbergasted at. I would think that everybody in that place was literally taking some sort of medication that caused them to be addle-brained and do crazy things because that's exactly what it seemed like. Anyway, I digress. Definitely listen to that. Uh, It's a heck of a tale, and I'm glad those boys made it out alive because, man, it was crazy. All right, that said, off my soapbox, back into this. All right, so that stuff's going there. What else? That? What do we got next? What specific host, network address ranges, or applications should explicitly not be tested? So kind of the anti-scope, right? The, the you know, someone's going to come to you and, you know, uh, what's the idea here? Let me, let, me paint a, let me paint a real good picture here. They grab you by the collar of the shirt and say, listen here, boy, you touch that production database and I will step on your eyelids. Does that make sense to you? Do you understand where I'm going with this? Right? Pain. Incredible record level pain that you could call Guinness and they would be able to verify that you have gone through the most pain of anybody that has ever lived in this earth and I will have caused it to you. And we'll get to be in there together. Of course, I'm going to prison after that. So this is all, you know, hyperbole. I'm just kind of having fun. (laughs) No one's going to prison. But you get the idea. Do not touch these things. Because if you do, a you you've breaking you, you're breaking you're broken your your contract really because we've explicitly said do not touch this. Those things can happen at, uh, inadvertently, accidentally, right? And then you got to have a plan of attack for when that happens. But um, we do need to on the outset let you know we don't want this in scope. You see this a lot with bug bounty scopes. You can go to bug something like hacker one or bug crowd and so on and so forth. And you look at uh, the specific, specific bug bounty programs and you can see in the scope that they'll have what you're allowed to touch and things you're not allowed to touch or things that don't count. If you were to submit it as a bug, right? Same kind of idea. All right. Now moving on, what do we got next list? Any third parties that own systems or networks that are in scope as well as which systems they own. Aha. Look at that. Written permission must have been obtained in advance by the target organization. You don't say. Why is that? Because they don't have the ability to give you permission to test it. Right? The idea of my mind comes into cloud services. Right? So if they're running things on cloud services, that's on the, especially like infrastructure as a service. I Am I testing against that infrastructure? Do, do they own it or does the cloud service own it? Well, how does that work? If not, so when a lot of times when you test into a cloud service, you must also engage with the cloud service provider or the client has and gain that written permission aforehand, right? And put that in the document. Make sure you have all those signatures signed and verified that they are the people that have the juice to give you permission to do that, right? So list any third parties that own systems or networks in that scope and get permission written and verifiable and slap this in here, right? Okay. And then once that's done, then you you have permission. Great. Will the test be performed against a live production environment or a test environment? I would go as far as to add or both, you know? And then we put in here, you know, both live and um, test environments and then kind of like give some some sort of indicator that these are those systems or those environments. And I would slap that in there. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see here. Will the penetration test include the following testing techniques? This is a standard thing that uh, does get added. Things we want you to do and things we don't want you to do. As I teach different uh, um, certifications and technical skills for cybersecurity, this is something that I kind of harp on. I think it's extremely important, specifically when we... Um, talk about denial of service attacks, right? Something that typically is referred to as stress testing. Not everybody, and when I say not everybody, I say most people do not want that because uh, especially, especially against their production environment, they don't want that because it's usually how they're doing business. If the production environment is not up, they are not making money. 
And that's not why they're in business. Now, they might have the risk appetite to do it, but you don't know. You got you to gotta find out with something like this. What do they wish us to do? What do they think is in scope? And of course, you will try to shepherd that by explaining some of these things to them, giving them a good idea why, you know, the pros and cons behind it and what they might want to a la carte choose yes or no to, right? So let's just take a look at some of the things that SANS has apply, uh, put in this here. We've got a ping sweep of network ranges. We've got a port scan of target hosts. Um, vulnerability scans. It's interesting. Ping sweep seems very innocuous, but it's in here, right? Maybe that comes from some pen testers' experiences, or a, a lot of pen testers come to go. Oh yeah, you do. You know, ping sweep without permission that can cause problems, or they don't like it, or it makes IDSs and IPSs go crazy, or you know, and we're not trying to over uh, overwhelm them with um, triaging seam alerts, right? Uh, so port scans might fall into that purview as well. Vulnerability scans also. You could be sending a lot of systems through the roof <clears throat> if you're performing that. Now, you might be wanting to test those systems and how well they do that. So they very well may be in the scope. And then, of course, penetration into targets. Mm. This is where probably most of us are sitting there going, please say yes, please say yes, please, 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 please say yes, please say I can do this. And they go, Billy, <clears throat> excuse me, Billy, should we allow this? And Billy's like, I don't know, boss. I, sounds good to me. And you're like, yes. Or, you know, they say, no, we don't want to go as far as to actually gaining access into them. We just want to know that if, if you'd have gotten that far, you think you could have, but don't go any farther. That's up to them. Application level manipulation. Am I going to... I'm thinking this probably is kind of ambiguous, but because there's web applications and there's desktop applications, you know, right? So different things, network applications. Um, am I, I, but I'm thinking buffer overflows at this point. I, I think that might be what they're talking about. If I'm able to send a buffer overflow condition to that system, it very well may crash. Um, and if that does happen, is that okay? Then we have client side Java ActiveX reverse engineering. That's interesting. So if you have client side code uh, or applications, am I allowed to have access to that and use that for my own ends? Or maybe they're talking about using client side. It does say reverse engineering, so that's interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a, I got my allergies today. I'm gonna take a little. Super phlegmy. I know, you wanted to hear that, right? Well, that's nice, Daniel. So glad to know the state of your congestion. Because <laughs> you care. Uh, or uh, it's not disgusting, right? Uh, physical penetration attempts. Uh, so is this like a, a, a true red team operation? Am I going to actually attempt to infiltrate your building in subsequent secure areas and then prove I was there by installing something, leaving a calling car, whatever, right? Social engineering of people. Oh, man, are the users? Because Billy over there is looking ripe for a social engineering attack, right? I got, Billy, I'm going to send you an email. It's totally legit. It's all about great stuff. Click those links, if you would. If you get any prompts, just yes your way through it. It's fine. You know how computers are. They complain about everything. Don't say, you just got to say yes, 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 and then you're fine. And Billy's like, all right, it's going to be fun. No, it's not. It's going to be fun for me. Billy's probably having a resume generating event or an RGE, as we like to say. And then any other thing, I jump back in. I, I, you like how I do that? Completely like weird story, contextualizing things, and then come, just jump right back into the document. <laughs> so any other thing that we would want to put in here that just doesn't fall under what we've said so far? Something very specific. You know, and as the pen tester, we might be shepherding that and going... Hey, have you thought because of your organization, you know, what we know about it so far, it sounds like this might be something you want to throw in there. And then they can say yes or no based off of their risk appetite. All right. What else do we have here? We have, will penetration testing include network testing? And if so, how will access be obtained? So interesting stuff here, right? Because uh, we've just been looking at basically like the application level, right? Does it say that? Will the penetration test include the following testing techniques? Some of these have been network things, but 
some of them have also just been like penetration into the target, application level, client side, physical, social engineering, right? And now we're talking specifically about, and oh, is that is that internal? Following test. Uh, so this does specifically say, and that is the thing about this. Look, I'll take you back here. You'll notice it does say internal network testing. So if I'm coming from a black box side, or am I going to do an internal test? Am I going to do a white box test? <clears throat> is it going to be both? Who knows? It could be a gray box test, right? Where you use a little bit of both. You know, one, the other, or both. What's it going to be? If so, how will access be obtained? This is going to be, do I need to hack my way into it? So like um, like a gray box kind of idea and then continue on? Or are you going to give me VPN access to a workstation there with a user account and everything that I need to just do an internal test? So got to know that stuff. Got to put that stuff in the documentation so that when and if and when you do perform that that function, you know exactly how that should be done. If you have any problems, you can get with them say, hey, here it is. Check that out. Tell me what's going on. Why is this not working? So on and so forth. Or if they find you in there, you do you had access to do that. Let's see. Are client and user systems included in scope? Great question. If so, how many clients are leveraged? So can I go after the end user systems or do you want me to just go after, you know, uh, servers or network equipment or things of that nature? Is social engineering allowed? I thought we already covered that. Yeah, social engineering and people. Maybe it's not just a, I mean, that's kind of what social engineering is. It's after the people. So it's a little redundant, but if so, how may it be used? And we can further define that information in this area. And then, if, oh, here it is. Denial of service detection. You know, that's last. It's like the big ask, right? Let me let me go ahead and get you warmed up to saying yes to things and then go after that denial of service because, man, I've been I've been just waiting like a fool to do one of these slow loris attacks against your web server. I, I just can't wait. And, you know, so. Uh, are dangerous checks or exploits allowed? No. That's going to kind of be, it seems like it would be contextual, but I guess there are some, if not a lot of exploits that are known to cause system crashes or issues, unstable. Um, and what's the word I'm looking for? Where the, where the system becomes unstable, right? Uh, that could occur. And if that is allowed, well, I need to have explicit permission to do those things. If I don't, guess what? If there's any knowledge beforehand and you probably want to do your research on any kind of new exploits on finding out whether or not it would cause an unstable condition, that's the word I was looking for, toward their network systems. And, and they say, no, you can't do that. You, you're not going to do that. You're going to be like, ah, wah, wah. oh, well, I guess I don't get that. Get, get creative, try something else, right? And then, of course, all the important people get to sign these documents. It's a great day, had by all, right? Signature of primary contact representing and then signed in date. And then the, the pen tester lead or the lead pen tester that's going to be running the team for the engagement, which might be just one person. It might be two people. It might be 10 people. You never know, right? Put all that business on there. Everybody's happy. Paperwork is complete. We're off to the races. I have one more thing. Just looking. I, uh, as you can see, I was kind of looking at this document. This is a, uh, a scope by Amber Sale that I just looked up. Scope document for penetration tests. Google that. Again, I'll add this to the, um, the description. But they kind of gave you a sample penetration testing procedure as they've developed for their methodology, right? For Amber Sale. It forms uh, part of the full PCI DSS policy documentation pack that can be found here, PCI policy pack. Read it and use this uh, document in conjunction with sample report policies and the accompanying so on and so forth. Then you can go look at the penetration testing policy and their sample for that. That's cool because this is very specific. This is specific to an organization that would be testing for the purposes of being PCI DSS compliance. Ha ha, that's kind of neat, right? So not just that generalized uh, worksheet that we saw from SANS, not that that's not a great document, it is, but this is kind of drilling down even farther and probably something that as you work in this industry as a penetration tester, you would probably run across doing this. So what do we have here? Document uh, references, dating, the status, the versioning, how many revisions has this gone through? A lot of great information. You'll notice this is all 
footnoted with very specific information so that we know that this doesn't get, you know, what page number it is. It's all about referencing what it is you're doing and being specific to the engagement itself. Having all that wonderful information footnoted there is going to be helpful for anybody that's looking over this information, right? And referencing it. Got a lovely table of contents telling you where to go if you need a specific thing, what page it's on, excellence, right? And then digging down into the details like the purpose. This document details the steps required to perform penetration testing on company cardholder data environment. This document should be read in conjunction with this. So it's telling you, hey, this is kind of an addendum to in conjunction with another document. So make sure you have that. And then, of course, there's the scope, right? Detailed below the procedures deal to below apply to all network components and application systems within whatever company you're testing and their card holder data a card holder data environment this includes wireless devices connected environments that are uh, directly connected to the card holder data environment so again they would have to get those third party if they are in there the roles and responsibilities saying hey the company's responsible role for executing implementing and implementing penetration tests and moving on, of course, the basic procedure, giving you a setup. This is all specific. To, oh, well, a lot of this looks specific, right? Like confirm 12 month anniversary date because it's an annual test usually for PCI DSS. Uh, so it does not apply to ad hoc penetration tests. Sometimes companies will create their own policy to say if uh, like a major change or upgrade or implementation of something, uh, uh, maybe even a deprovisioning of a certain type of technologies has occurred or implementing new security controls, any kind of thing that might change the environment should constitute another pen test to make sure that those security controls are effective, at least at the very least a vulnerability assessment, just to make sure that everything's been done, do a security audit and see that that is done correctly. All right. Oh, man, I'm at 26 minutes. That's why I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I'm trying to make things shorter for you guys and just cram as much information into a more condensed ball. All right. So giving you that information, here's some good stuff. During Oh, I do like this. Ensure IP addresses of organization performing external, pen, uh, external testing are recorded and communicated to affected parties. This will include network security function supporting the IDS and IPS. Cool stuff. Uh, set up any testing accounts required. So this is all that, that basic setup. And then during the test, monitor testing traffic and any impact on production test networks. We don't want to be causing issues, right? So if something starts going crazy, let us know and we'll stop, right? If we see that we're doing something crazy and we can't make a stop, we'll let you know, hey, we got to get this to stop. It's going to cause a problem or it is causing a problem. A uh, regular update schedule with tester to understand the progress and report on it. You'll have a point of contact and you'll you'll do debriefings with them, maybe daily, maybe weekly, maybe every other day, whatever it is. You guys got to set up that cadence um, and just follow it, right? Hey, here's the debrief for today. Here's what we were doing. If you saw any problems, have you seen any issues? You kind of go back and forth and just kind of uh, a one-on-one, -on -one, right? And then, of course, after the, after the test is over, post-test, confirm testing was complete, revoke any credentials and revoke any temporary internet access. Don't forget to do some cleanup. So if you drop tools and things of that nature, that you're removing all that, basically returning their environment back to the state in which you found it, at least as close to as possible. Uh, oh, there's more, right? I didn't get to the bottom. Accept penetration testing report. So you're going to deliver that. Interview, review to discuss findings, schedule remediations. Uh, so that might be what you're doing. You might not be handing those remediations off to their team. You might have actually been um, engaged for that as well. Okay, you found problems. Now fix them for us. Show us how that was wrong, how we can do better. And then schedule a retest, right? To confirm that all those things were done. Whew, lots of stuff in here. Uh, there was like a whole area like identifying targets. So it gets into that. This is a great document because it gives you a really specific and I like that idea. Checking the time. Oh, man, I'm going to try to cut it underneath 30 here. And then, of course, the different types of tests and descriptions of what that means. So if you want us to do information disclosure and add that, here's where that's going to. That's what that is. So helping them do that. So run through this document. Only a few pages. What is eight pages long? What it means to do wireless testing, what enforcement means. Now that looks in a glossary of references. So if you have any appendices or anything like that. You want to put that in here. Whew. Paperwork, application testing, great stuff. 
There we go. Paperwork, right? Administrative things. Guess what? I would venture a guess that if you were following these things, you were looking up sample reports like what we just saw today, filling them out even as like create a company, kind of create those situations, any kind of hands-on that you can perform and get that experience. Like not just, oh, I know that you have to do that, but look at the standard structures that you see throughout the different samples. Try to create your own even. Maybe take a CTF and instead of doing a walkthrough, treat it as if you had to scope that engagement out and then create a scope document for it, right? That gives you, what? What do we call that? Experience, Billy. Experience. Now you can say not just knowledgeable about scopes, but experience with scope. Now you you got to put the context in there. Let them know, oh, I did that through uh, writing up scope documents for CTFs that I engaged in to gain more hands-on with that. So if you're trying to get into penetration testing, that could be a great way to prove that you at least have some experience with it. You understand the structure and the reasoning and what kind of goes into that, the importance of it. Man, I got a whole laundry list of why this is super important for you to have experience and knowledge about. So that said, I'm going to leave that there. Definitely play around with a statement of work. Oh, not statement of work. That's what we're going to do uh, down the road because we also have statement of works and um, ROEs. These are the rules of engagement, things of that nature. Going to be very important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to administration. Also, the final reports, the deliverable, the thing you hand over and say, here's what we did and here's why it was bad and here's how we can fix it and here's how we're going to fix it and all that wonderful good stuff that we do to try to help our clients have a more secure environment. Whew. Okay, I'm out of breath. I'm going to take a sip. And then I'm going to raise my glass to you good folks out there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you next time. Until then, keep hacking.